Welcome to the fifth video in the series Excel for Stock Market, where we publish 30 different Excel templates and explain them in 30 videos in 30 days. In this video, we will go over how to use this template and then I will also show behind the scenes what is being done in order to develop the functionality that we have. If you have not seen the previous videos, please, um, I will put a link to the playlist so you can actually go and watch those previous videos as well. And we will also have them on the top right of the YouTube video as well, so we can easily get to that playlist. In this video, we're going to talk about the stocks watch list template where you can actually enter your own list of stocks and use it as a watch list for you to see the price and the history information of those stocks. Before we get started, um, please subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. And if you like the content, please share with your friends. Now let's get started. So first, as a user, when you look at the stock watch list template, this is what it looks. And when you download, you can um, see that a few stocks are entered, but you can go ahead and enter your own stock. So for example, I want to type in F for Ford Motor Company. So it's going and bringing that in. If I want to do Facebook, FB, I can pull that in. Disney, DIS, enter, Walt Disney. Um, so again, really, really easy to enter. It just takes a second or so and it'll pull in. And this is interesting because I actually meant something different. Um, so I meant Honda Motor Company, but it looks like it's pulling from some other um, stock exchange, XS. TC. So I don't want that. Let's say, for example, I would want, I can go in and say data type change and Excel will now show you the options of a, apparently there's no option here. So let's go back and change the search term to HMC. And now we can see that there is a HMC in the New York Stock Exchange. So I can now select that one. So another way to do that would be instead of me just typing in HMC, I could have typed in XNYS for New York Stock Exchange, colon HMC, then Excel would have understood correctly in the first attempt itself. So the point here is to use the exchange if you know, uh, otherwise use the search option just like what I did now to enter your own stocks. The template is very simple. You enter a list of stocks and you automatically, I mean, you saw that it automatically updated all the information um, about those um, stocks that you entered. And it immediately brings in the volume traded today, the price right now, the change, change percent. Uh, I'll talk about the recent performance in a little bit. But PE, 52 week low, 52 week high, and then you can see the range and you can see where it is today with respect to that range. And it's indicated with this little um, blue indicator. So a lot of things are really closer to the 52 week high. It looks like they're all trending up. And then the we have two columns here where you can actually customize what you want to display. So for example, you're incorporated. So in your case, let's say you don't want to see the year, you want to see the price in the extended hours. And in this case, there are some stocks which have price in the extended hours available, some of them don't. Um, and then you can also change this to number of shares outstanding. There we go. So instant, instant data. So real. I'm really impressed with how instantly the data comes through. So I can do the price if I want to list the price here, previous close, if that makes more sense to me. And you can then format that a little bit if you want to in the normal formatting. But the point here is that you can choose from the long list of uh, attributes to you make it more customized for your needs. And we have provided, I've provided two columns so I can change this to um, one of these other values. Like maybe I want to display beta. And so I can do that. This list is coming from a drop down list based on all these values, all these attributes in the help sheet. So you can choose from all of these 30 different options, 30 different fields that you can display um, and you can choose from here. So the bottom line is it pulls in a lot of information. You can customize it and then add your own two columns of information that makes sense and that's useful to you. And finally, we have the price history. 
So this shows the last 21 days of history and you see the little red dot at the, you know, let me zoom in a little bit more. And you can now see the bottom most or the lowest point and the uh, as red and then the topmost point as green. And this one, for example, this has been growing and this is um, this stock, for example, the 52 week high is 304. Uh, this is Facebook. This is at 290.63 right now. And that is pretty much the, um, you know, if you look at it, the last um, 21 days of history, it's pretty close to being the highest. Uh, I think it's probably the second highest or something in the last 22 days. Now, this is what the template shows. And, um, you know, you you could be adding other things. If you have seen our previous videos about how to use the stocks data type and bring in the formulas to show more information, you can go ahead and edit them. Um, so now for the second part of the video, I want to talk about how this was developed. And I'm not going to go into every single formula, but I'm going to give you an overview of the steps. And if you uh, download the template and look at the formulas, and if you feel and if you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'm happy to respond. Um, but again, I I think if I go into each of the formulas and step by step, it'll be a much longer video. Uh, let me know if that would be helpful and I will you know, plan to do so in the future. Now, in order to develop this 21 day history, what I've done here is in the help sheet, first I want to find out the 21 days exactly. For example, uh, as a reference and bring in all the, this is a stock history um, formula. So the stock history formula will bring in the trading dates as well. So I'm bringing in last 30 days of um, history of trading. And then I then use this to come up with the last 21 days. So day one will be in this case, Feb 22nd. And then uh, it goes all the way to March 22nd. And if you count the number of trading days, it's actually 21. So that is my first step. I, I find the last 21 trading days. The reason why it's multiple steps is because there are there are certain days where trading will not happen. And we want to pick the last 21 trading days, not last 21 calendar days. So that's why this extra step comes in. Now you can see that I've named the cell D1. I've named the cell D2. So basically I've named all of these with a D underscore the number. So that's all we need to know about this help sheet, so I'm gonna hide it. Now let's go into our watch list sheet. You can see that I have hidden all these columns. And just to illustrate, there are 21 columns here. So when I select all the column headers, you see at the bottom, count 21. So 21 columns, which use similar formula. It's a very simple stock, stock history formula, where I am saying, give me the stock history for date D1. So in my next column, I will say bring it for day two. And then if I go to the next, it's D3 and so on. So all of these actually has price information. So if I expand it, you will see that there are, okay, that's uh, a little bit longer. Okay, there we go. So there are 21 columns like this. And, you know, I don't want to, I didn't want to show it. So I'm just going to hide it. Okay, now I then use those 21 columns to plot this spark line. So the spark line is nothing but if I go to spark line, I can go and edit the data. And you see that my I am plotting it in this column n, but the data comes from 05 to AI14, um, which is the hidden columns. So I probably should not have Hidden it. Okay, let me try again. Edit data, edit group. So now when I click on it, you see that this is the data that I'm using for my spark line. And I'm um, using or I'm creating the spark lines in column N. So this is how this 21 day history is created. So now we have that, we can hide it so that it is easier on the eye here. So if I zoom back out, so now we have a really nice stock watch list, which not only has the uh, stock information, but also has a 21 day history. 
And I'm using a, um, a point here, a column which I didn't mention before, which is the recent performance. The recent performance, my intent was here, if the current price is greater than the previous 21 day history high, then give me a certain um, indicator. And similarly, if the price is less than the minimum in the last previous 21 days, then tell me that it's, it's so. So I can show you what it'll look like. So if the, the price is greater than the previous 21 day high, it will have a check mark. And then if the price is less than the minimum of the previous 21 days, then it'll have a cross or a check uh, that way, um, X, which indicates that it's not performing well. So my intent was here to easily identify the stock which is performing really well compared to the recent performance and also um, a stock which is not doing well compared to the recent history. So this is what it is. Right now it shows blank and that's because none of these stocks have actually met these criteria. None of them are outperforming the recent uh, history. And that's why I wanted to see, one last thing I wanted to see here, is you see the price of Facebook is right now 290.63. And I think Facebook is getting closer in this example to, let me just make it as wide, so we can see the last 21 days. Facebook reached 293.54 yesterday and 290 the previous day. So it reached 293.54 yesterday. Right now it is 290.63. Okay, so let me highlight that column. Right now it's 290.63. Yesterday was 293.51. Yesterday was slightly higher than today. That's why it is not getting uh, highlighted as a outperforming stock in the recent performance column. Otherwise, you would have seen a check mark here. That would have been much nicer for the, for the demo here, but hopefully I'm getting the message across here that this simple formula now allows you to quickly identify good performing and not so good performing stocks with a clear indication. You can modify this uh, formula um, if you want to say, hey, if the current price is within 10% of the max in the last or something like that. You can modify this formula and make it your own custom um, indicator to know which stocks are doing well and which stocks are not. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. We talked about a simple stocks watch, watch list where you can type in your own um, stock um, list symbols and manage and anytime when you want to refresh the data, you just come in and here and say data refresh and it'll go and pull the new data. If you if you want to know, for example, when was the last time it's refreshed, I think we have um, seen some videos in the previous where we can do last trade time, merge this, so this is the date time. In my case, I'm seven hours behind, so minus seven um, divided by 24. So this is um, at 3.15 p.m. on March 23rd. Um, that is when this data is representing. Um, so one thing I forgot to mention is the green, yellow, red. So we have these little um, arrows going down because they're all down from yesterday. But So that's why you see the red. And this one is a positive one, but we have put it in as um, yellow. And that's because my criteria was anything greater than or equal to 5% should be indicated with a green arrow. Anything where the change is uh, greater than or equal to zero, but less than five should be yellow. And then anything below zero will be red, right? So if I change this to anything, um, I mean, whatever we are looking at, everything is down. So it's gonna be hard to you know show the differences here, but you can change this 5% to something else. You can change this 0% to something else as you see so that you can have your own custom conditional formatting to do the green, yellow, red um, arrows. So that's about it. Thank you very much for taking the time and I will see you tomorrow in a brand new video. We'll be going into a completely new um, area tomorrow's video. So I hope that you can join us. Please um, share and subscribe to this channel if you think this content is useful. Thank you very much.